actual insight to offer. Because I've covered crypto casinos in yeah. the past. I've covered this topic extensively. I've researched it extensively. I've lost sleep over this. Another point that also comes to my mind is the viewer experience. Generally, if these streaming contracts are handled out or given, then I think it's just, uh, I think it's better than, you know, requesting donations or ads necessarily from streamers. That yeah, is, is, of course, if streamers don't choose to, like, triple dip into it. I think Which taking that burden of, like, monetization away from, like, the crowd yeah. is ultimately a net benefit. You get a stream that should hopefully be filled with less advertisements uh, or, or sponsorships, if anything, since the streamer has already gotten their, uh, you know, money covered. But that's just something that came to my head. Don't really see it coming out this way. And I think just to finalize it, obviously... Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I've turned off my fucking donations. Like, his main reason is because people would donate shit whenever I would be talking to McConnell and they would want to get a word in to our conversation and it was fucking annoying, so I just turned it off. That's actually the main reason. There's not a moral reason. It, it's just, it's fucking annoying. However, um, another reason is like, like, I don't know, I'm fine. Like, people don't need to be giving me money and shit. And if I want to get people to give me money, I'll at least try to give them a, like a, some stupid t-shirt, right? Buy an, buy an OTK shirt, you know? That's fine, that's enough. Man, yeah, $2 donated $2 and they said $2 donated to, oh, it's, oh, it's $1. This is back whenever it was $1. That's, oh God, it was that long ago, yeah. And then I checked my fucking, uh, my PayPal, uh, transaction fees, and I saw they're taking 30 cents out of every dollar. So like, I'm getting called, I'm getting called bald for for 60 cents. There is a heavy gambling focus on cake. I'm not going to deny that. That's pretty much the most popular category. But it would be interesting to see how the site can survive as if like somehow that ratio goes more into the favor of general streamer and how long the site could actually bear the burden of like generally hosting live streaming material without new gambling addictions being formed because nobody's promoting more gambling. Will yeah. the site just suddenly start to promote stake? That would be an interesting turn of events. Yeah, I think and they might do that. wondering too, like the site allows banned streamers or like, you know, kind of like extremist figures on its mm -hmm. platform. I think the more popular the site's going to get, just like YouTube and Twitch, it's going to start heavily moderating itself too. Because if it doesn't, it faces the fact that it could absolutely be hit on by avatar. It could actually be like you know pressured by advertisers or you know both ios and google can remove it from the respective stores if they choose to have completely unmoderated content anyways that's a that's a that, that's a that's a situation that i think will correct itself it, over time anyways as the platform develops yeah i i uh, i think that's probably true to an extent i think rumble doesn't do that shit so it's probably not going to be anything too crazy uh obviously uh you've got you've got twitter you can post whatever the fuck you want on twitter uh, i like my perspective is you should be able to say whatever you want unless you're breaking the law if you're breaking the law then it's a problem more popular maybe there's a couple of exceptions so yeah, I wanted to talk about it because yeah, I have a personal like attachment to it. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I actually do want to hear about the ladies myriad of discourse we have in our own community. But anyways, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike, I am out. That's a good video. That's a good one. We're gonna watch this shit tomorrow. Hello guys. Uh, yeah, I mean I'm gonna link y'all this video. Like we, we've been wa we, we haven't watched a Mudahar video in a long time, so I'm glad that we got a chance to uh, to take a look at it. I think he's got some uh, some insight uh, into it. He talked about how sponsorship adds legitimacy to streamers, and some take them not for the money, but. For the name recognition yeah sure that can happen if like you're getting sponsored by like gamestop or something like that yeah this guy's uh this guy makes great videos i would 100 percent recommend he basically all of the same stuff that i talk about he talks about so like it's some stupid thing that happens on social media he'll talk about it some stupid thing that happens with the game he'll talk about it some stupid thing that happens on twitter he'll talk about it i'm gonna be honest i completely just didn't even pay attention to like anything they fucking said <laughs> i think their whole point is that like Gambling isn't tied to kick as a platform or whatever. Cool. Same 27 minutes. Uh... More pathetic than a guy who calls himself an alpha male. The only thing more pathetic than a guy who calls himself an alpha male is a guy who calls himself an alpha male and then tries to sell advice to desperate lonely men. Hey guys, it's your boy and CEO. And today we talk about all my W's. Stay tuned for it. I love intros like these. You get some like wacky wubby dubstep kind of shit going on there with a dumb intro. It is so nostalgic. Takes me right back to 2011. Anyway, this is the Fresh and Fit podcast. The entire purpose of this show is to bring women on to insult and belittle them to their face while also preaching that men should have the right to cheat on their significant other as many times as they want, whereas their significant other isn't even allowed to look at other men if you go in public with like fucking horse blinders on. And if they even so much as glance at a dude, you need to kick them to the streets immediately because they're a fucking disgusting, worthless whore. It's a lot of horrible, abhorrent shit that they talk about and i'm sure you've heard of them or seen them before because they've had so many viral clips over the last year of them getting dunked on by their guests they bring on i'm pretty sure the two of them have a humiliation fetish which is the reason they keep this show running but they're also kind of like the voldemort of youtube at least they were for a little bit they used to copyright claim and copyright strike anyone that would make fun of them or joke about them saying that it was damaging their brand or making them look silly even though they themselves are the clowns in their own circus they're making themselves look fucking stupid they never actually won any of their strikes or claims or anything like that they all got overturned but still just absolutely cowardly pussy behavior from people that claim to be alpha males. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about Fresh and Fit as a whole or the entire production of it. I want to focus on one video they posted in particular, one that I still think back on with a little wet spot in my trousers. It's one of the most delusional things I've ever seen from a YouTube channel. 
it's one of the hosts that is telling a story that is completely made up, just obviously fiction. He is literally making up fanfic on par with My Immortal in a way that makes him look like he constantly fucks. Even though I'm pretty convinced that the shorter guy here is a virgin, yet he still makes these crazy claims and stories like the one I'm about to show you. All right, guys, so you heard my L's, marrying a single mom, getting left out in the cold, basically in the car, never came downstairs. But today we're gonna talk about my W in terms of having three women in one day. Let me stop you right there. I already don't believe you. It's super hard to think that anything they say is real when they constantly make stupid fucking claims like this one. Not to mention they've both shown themselves to be frauds time and time again. So, you know, we're both triple digit notch count, he's in the quadruples. <laughs> there is no reality in the entirety of the fucking multiverse where this man has slept with one woman, let alone over a thousand of them. Doctor Strange could peer into an endless multiverse and never find one where this guy slept with a thousand women. They just say a whole bunch of made up bullshit constantly. But I met this guy at a pool party. He's an NBA player. I won't say his name for some reason, but you know, you should be talk to your guy, head by your guy, right? I'm at the bar ordering drinks for my friends, and he says, yo, bro, what's a good spot to go party at tonight? I told him, look, bro, you can go down, down, downtown, you can go to Brickle, Wynwood, doesn't really matter, but I'm going to uh, downtown because it's a really good spot. And then he's like, yo, bro, are you on Instagram? And then he added me on Instagram, we became best friends, he got me a tryout with his NBA team, which I absolutely crushed and became a starter on the squad, setting NBA world records, he invited me to Thanksgiving at his parents' house, I fucked his mom, <laughs> and then the whole family clapped. That would be more believable than the story he's about to tell from here. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. So I give him my Instagram, and lo and behold, he followed me, he said, wait, you know this chick? So he posted this, this girl's profile, as you can see, he was following someone they just added from like the following list. I was like, yeah, I know her, bro. I used to like do her back in the day. He's like, damn. I'm not sure what you want to come in town. So basically, we were smashing the same chick. No, you weren't. The only thing you've been smashing is your meat into your hand, you liar. This story's already got more plot holes in it than Kingdom Hearts. Why would an NBA player go up to a random guy at a pool party to ask for a party later? He's clearly already connected. He found out about the pool party, so why would he go up to a complete stranger at a bar to ask for further advice on partying, and then going a step further to add him on Instagram? That just doesn't make any sense. Unless Fresh and Fit dropped to the floor and sucked his dick raw at the bar in front of everyone, why would this NBA player care to add him on Instagram? NBA players, celebrities, they don't follow like anybody at all, except for like actual close friends or business partners or something like that. So why would he add a complete stranger who he only asked one question to, where should I party? And past that, why would he then check who this new guy was following? Oh, hey, pardon me, I couldn't help but notice that this girl that I'm piping is being followed by you. Are you that creepy stalker she has a restraining order against? Or like, what's the deal there? Are you guys friends? Oh, oh, you guys used to fuck too? All right, fist bump. We just became best friends, let's go. So he's like, yo, dude, you know what? I'm having a mansion party, like, uh, the next day. Come through, I got you. All this time, you know, we linked up the same night at the party spot I was going to, we connected. And funny enough, we dated the same girls like a bunch of them. It's crazy, you know? Like I always say, me and Myron, a lot of these girls share the same high value men and they're running around the same circles, right? You have the gall, the chutzpah, to sit here and insult not only the intelligence of your viewers, but insult God himself with the claim that you and the NBA player were having sex with the same women. Do you honestly expect anyone in the world to believe that? And then to have the audacity to make the claim that women go for the same high value males? You are somehow putting yourself in the same ballpark as a fucking NBA player. You who runs one of the most laughed at podcasts on the internet since the My Little Pony fan club radio show. You think that you are a same level of high value male as an NBA player? Fucking mind blowing. I'm at his magic party, right? There's like 40 girls and like five guys. In my head, I'm like, yo, real talk, this is crazy. Like I've never been at a party where there's been this much girls compared to guys. So I'm like, yo, how's this gonna work? He says to me, yo, come through, bro. So he's like, yo, pick three that you want, and I got you. I was like, three that I want? This is like a buffet? Shoot, I'll take it. Bro, this does not sound like an NBA player. This sounds like human trafficking. Pick any three girls and I got you. That should be like setting off alarm bells in your head, I would think. What might have happened is some guy came up to him and lied like, yeah, I'm in the NBA. I'm also ex-Special Forces, over 500 confirmed kills, and I fuck on the daily. In fact, hourly. In fact, I'm be late for a threesome right now. But yeah, anyway, uh, just going back to fresh and fit lore here. So our boy is now in a mansion with 45 topless babes, big asses, sodden, dripping vaginas, and every single one of them has his name shaved into their pubic hair, I bet. So I was like, yo, I like her, her, and her. He, he goes talks to them, calls them over, and I kid you not, I got a bedroom for you over here, do your thing. I'm like, what the heck? Is it that easy? So what happened was, like, I, I talked to them real quick, they were mad cool, and legit, guys, I could have had a threesome with them, but I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like, I had no idea what was going on. I was like, yo, this is too much for me. But far be it for me to question the math here, but it would have been a foursome, not a threesome. Unless, of course, the three girls fucked each other and then told you to just go far away from them, like hide in the bathroom or something, which I imagine would have happened. Also, he speaks fondly of this event, but I imagine this was one of the worst days of all three of those women's lives. 
assuming, of course, the story is real, which it's not. I'm just suspending disbelief for a moment. Obviously, he is literally making this shit up as he goes along. What happened was, I did my thing with one of them, came back outside, hopped in the shower real quick, talked to the other one, went back in the room later on. Basically, I had three girls in one night. It sounds crazy, guys, but there's a whole other world outside of the regular dating circle where guys of high value can actually, like, set up certain things that regular guys can't. What an incredible story. I can't wait for the sequel. Fresh and fit in the goblet of fucking... I don't even understand the title of this video anymore. It's Pull Girls Easily. It doesn't seem like there was anything easy about this. He, he met someone that claimed to be an NBA player that invited him to a mansion and then assigned three women to fuck him. Like, that's not exactly a lesson that can translate to most people. Of course, it's all made up and shit, but the takeaway here is basically nothing. It's a fucking nothing burger. It's this guy trying to make himself look cool and embarrassing himself. So, translate that into, like, my own lifestyle. You know, from Instagram, I say, you know what? I can have three in one day. What can I do it myself? Learning from deals on demand that you guys are gonna uh, learn if you bought a course. We're gonna re-release it soon, uh, coming up maybe like next month. That whole setup there can be done for yourself through Instagram or dating app. How is me buying your course going to help me fuck three times in one day? Is the course just that NBA player's phone number for his mansion of sex? Like there's just nothing you can really teach from this story you've told here. Nothing translates. There's no lesson. You picked three girls that a guy then instructed to have sex with you. And it never happened in the first place, and I hate that I keep suspending disbelief for even a fraction of a second to entertain the idea that this happened in reality, when we all know it didn't. But even still, what is the takeaway? There is nothing that happened in this whole video that could help some lonely guy at all. You can take L's all your life, you can take W's, but the point here is that, like, you can have whatever you want in this life. You made that choice. So for me, I was at a point where three a day was easily done through Instagram, and that's what I did. But even in this fantasy, that's not what you did. You didn't set up three girls in one day through Instagram or anything like that. A guy did it for you. He fucking told them to have sex with you. You didn't talk to them through Instagram, you didn't get to know them or anything like that. Even in their own stories, they can't help but just treat women like objects. Like, yeah, he gave me three women to fuck. And that's why I'm the king of Instagram dating. Like, what are you talking about? It's so fucking wild. It, it's incredibly embarrassing. I don't know how they can post things like this and not feel any amount of shame. But anyway, I just wanted to talk about this one and uh, that's about it. See ya. I entered an enormous... Uh, those are Zoomers. Here we go, let's watch this. So I went on Reddit the other day, and I saw a thread that was quite interesting. The what's title it? was, what's it like being in your 20s in the UK these days? And even if you're not in the UK or 20s, I bet you'll be able to relate to the top answer. Okay. Let me read it out for you. What's the point? I'm renting and I would love to buy a house. But you're never going to buy a house. Houses are for people that are over 50, and you're never going to retire, you're just going to die. The point. I'll likely never pay it off. Mm -hmm. I'm paying loads into a pension, yep. but what's the point? I'm going to be working until I die. <laughs> I'd like to see a doctor about some minor ailments, but what's the point? There's never any appointments anyway. If you couldn't tell, this is going to be a video that is brimming with optimism. Oh, we love the Doomer videos. Those are great. Is that true for you guys? And, and like, think about it like this. That's somebody in the UK. I have to see the doctor over here? Okay, well, um, that's all your money. But I think there's an important message to be made here. If you clicked on this, I'm going to assume that, to at least some degree, you can relate to the sentiment that this user has posted. In fact, I came across a study that... I used to be in this place, uh, you know, back whenever I was younger, you know, early 20s. ...found that over half of young people agree with the statement that humanity is doomed. And if I, I wanted to convince do. you otherwise, I could tell you that child mortality has dropped by half in the last 20 years, or any other bunch of random stats, but I don't think they actually convey anything helpful for most of us. I want you to stick with me for the next few minutes, because I think we can actually go in a more useful direction. Okay. And on the off chance that the random Reddit user, throw your flashy 6048, is watching this, this one's for you, bro. So... Um, hold on. <clears throat> I didn't know he had a fucking Warren Berry equipped. Oh my god, Harris, what the fuck? Should almost always be mega horn. I can kill Zoot Garados. Okay, good.
Okay, good thing these triggers are easy. The sentiment expressed in that comment is hardly something uncommon. And just like absolutely everything that my generation has done, they've turned it into a meme. The meme is called the Doomer. Yep, that's right. That's Presumably right. some of you that's aren't me. chronically online and aren't entirely yep. familiar with the Doomer. And so I want to give you a definition as described by one of my favorite channels on YouTube, Pseudo the Wonder. Mm -hmm. The Doomer is an individual who's in their early 20s. He or she is... Oh, I could be in their early 30s too, which reminds me, soon I'll be in my mid-30s. And that's why I'm a Doomer. Someone who feels a sense of aimlessness or loneliness and is consequently stricken with a deep despair for life. For the Doomer, life is meaningless, and the world is inevitably doomed by humanity's ignorance, greed, and futility. As a result, the Doomer sees little to no reason mm -hmm. in engaging in traditional pursuits, that's right. and retreats from society into apathetic That's crisis. right, that's where you farm the Shaco. That's where you farm achievement points. That is where you are level 100 in the preseason of Diablo 4. That's right. Oh, that's right! Now, if this description is at all relatable to you, as it was for me, then I want you to stick with me for the next few minutes, okay. because understanding a little bit about why this phenomenon is so prevalent nowadays might give you a few tools in your arsenal to help you deal with these feelings. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. So, brief aside, there are a lot of people in the world right now who are materially affected by quite tragic circumstances. And I'm not aiming to invalidate anyone who does feel that way. What I want to focus on is instead a sense of disillusionment, a feeling of disconnection from the social environment. That well, people are disillusioned because they go to a job that they fucking hate, and they're fed social media algorithms that make them hate themselves and hate everybody else around them. They're surrounded by people that they fucking hate. They don't have any money. They're fat. And if they're not fat, they have four other body disorders because of uh, Instagram filters, and they're unhealthy. They can't afford to have kids. They can't afford to have a house. They're renting a car on 21% uh, uh, fucking 21% interest. They've got credit card debt. They got a theoretical physics degree that got them a theoretical job. The only thing that's not theoretical is the $80,000 of uh, uh, $80,000 of student debt. Yeah, they never forget about that one, huh? They voted for Biden. He said he was going to get rid of it. He forgot. Maybe next time he'll do it. Sure. They've been having a pain in their leg, but if they go there, then they won't be able to afford food. So do you want your leg or do you want food? Well, I don't know. A lot of people feel right now. And I'd like to keep that in mind when watching the rest of this. Thanks. So, if I ask you, why has a generation in the face of these gigantic issues chosen to give up on maths? You might give a few different answers. Some of you might say something like this. Well, people these days just don't want to work for what they want. This generation has just decided to choose the easy way out instead of facing the struggles head on. To which I would say, well, why do we assume that giving up is the easy option? Let's try listening and maybe we might reach a different conclusion entirely. I think that there are a lot of people that give up. I actually think that's true in a lot of cases. Maybe I'll be an asshole for saying this, but we live in a world now where you can get a quality education that is better than anything else anybody could have gotten maybe 200 years ago, aside from like royalty, about anything if you have an internet connection. You can teach yourself to do anything. You can teach yourself to be a mechanic. You can teach yourself to build computers. You can teach yourself to code. You can teach yourself to do anything, but all you're doing is teaching yourself to complain about the world. I think this is true. Absolutely. There's a massive, there's a massive culture of learned helplessness, and I think it's harmful. I think it's very harmful. And if you ever speak out against it, the people that you're speaking out to will call you privileged. They'll say, oh, well, you had it easy. They don't realize that they have it easy, too, while they're typing on their fucking smartphone on their high-speed internet in their first world country. Easy, my mother ancestors died in World War. Yes and no, you might have the resources to gather the information, but you may not have the time or money to afford it because you have to care for your family. Um, yeah, but these are people that have 24,000 tweets on their Twitter, but they can't fucking figure out how to, how to learn a skill. These are people that are level 100 in Diablo, but they can't learn a skill. You've always got time. Of course you've got time. Maybe not every single person. There are people out there that are fucked. I'm talking about they are fucked. But you know what? You're probably not one of them. It's probably not that bad. Whenever you really put it into perspective. I find it very difficult to say that humorism is an easy way out, when it's not really a way out of anything. No, it's not. It's just just relieve any particular individual of the I stress think. and the trauma of human behavior at large, and I don't think it necessarily frees you from anything. This angle, I feel, is most often brought forward by people from a different generation, mm -hmm. who fundamentally had a different contract between them and society at large. People who lived a large part of their young adulthood through a time of optimism, a time where it seemed like... Well, hard keep work. in mind, uh, the world is incredibly fucking optimistic now. We have constant medical scientific breakthroughs all the time. AI is making people's lives easier in tremendous ways. Automation is going to remove backbreaking jobs that basically force people into, uh, you know, some like modern day feudalism to where they have to work for like $8 an hour at Walmart. Uh, the, the world is, is getting better and better and better. 
The problem is that the social systems in the world are not getting better at the same rate that technology is. So True. like the people that are running shit don't understand the capacity for technology. And because of that, they're designing rules that would have made sense 20 years ago. Many people face AI advancements with Zoomer mentalities, though. It's because they're stupid. That's not that's not their fault. But would actually genuinely be rewarded. What I think we see when we look at Doomers is a group of people who feel one of two ways, misled or powerless. It's yeah. a group of people that is bombarded with messaging that tells them that their efforts are futile. They feel like the contract between society and them has been broken irreversibly, and thus there's nothing we can do but resign so ourselves. This is what happens, right? Is that you go to school, uh, you're fucking 17, you uh, can't afford to go to college, all of your friends are going to college, their lives are moving on, their parents are able to pay for things, your parents aren't, you're, uh, you know, just falling behind socially, which causes you to fall behind academically, and then, you know, there's like the vicious circle of these two things, uh, you're working a job that you hate, meanwhile, other people have, uh, you know, like their dad owns a company, so they're able to get a job there that's not as unpleasant, and they're able to be paid more, and, uh, you know, have good, uh, you know, like a fucking, like contacts and shit, right, uh, networking. There are all these things, and then, you know, you, you start off like this, and then by the time that you're 25 or 30, it's like this. And so you're still working at Hobby Lobby, and this person has a $100,000 a year job. And that's what happens. So, right, yeah, well, I mean, uh, how do you think I know this? And so I don't think it's fair to characterize doomerism as a choice, necessarily, as a conscious decision to give up and choose ease of life, because it's not any easier than any other mode of life. Rather, it's a mindset that one develops after losing the so-called naive optimism you might have as a younger person. Well, yeah, you, that's, that's what happens, is I think most people are doomers. Like, people that are doomers are mainly doomers because they thought things would be okay, and then they weren't. That's what happens. Everybody, you know, like, oh, well, things are gonna get, things are gonna get better, they're gonna get better, then they don't, and things are gonna get better, then they don't. And I think that with a lot of these people, the reason why they don't get better is because of their own actions. It's probably their fault that they don't get better. But a lot of people don't have the self-awareness for that. They don't realize that they are feeding into their own negative, uh, vicious circle of life. They're taught that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of a cell and how to divide fractions in school. They don't know how to do taxes. They've got no self-esteem, but they can speak another language in a country they'll never go to. And some of you might agree with that. Some might even take the idea further and say something like this. Um, I mean, I kind of agree um, that like people choose it. I just don't think that... Um... I don't think they were raised in a society that cares enough about mental health from like a young age and shit. And I don't think we're really taught to like think for ourselves and to, um, I don't think we understand how to like cope with technology and shit and how to like make connections and, and stuff like this. Um, outside of like just going to fucking grade school, um, and like going to work and stuff like that. Um, I, I think it's like a, something that people just kind of like expect you to be able to do um and then the the education thing is uh like i, I definitely think asmund's right with like uh talking about the social programs haven't um caught up to like the technological advancements that we're in um and he's also right about like the social media shit um and it's it's not that it's not your own fault it's just kind of like i think nobody understands why nobody understands <laughs> the how do i put this i think a lot of the stuff is like very confusing as to like how are we are meant how we're how we ought to move forward with the current technologies of like social media and stuff while also still getting sufficient in-person interactions and healthy friendships and relationships. Um, and I think like the Gen Z and like millennials are really like the first people who have to like actually deal with that, uh, especially after COVID. Um, I think it's like a completely different fucking um, time. Uh, people just interact in like such different ways after COVID. Um, okay, so I get what you're saying. It sounds to me like doomerism and apathy are almost like a rational response. Why would anyone bother caring when facing these issues such as climate change and retirement? Yeah. It seems to me like the sensible, rational thing to do is to... I mean, I gotta be honest. If you're a doomer because of, like, climate change and, and uh, like... <laughs> I just, I don't even know what to tell you. Um...
I <laughs> okay, so like climate change is real and everything, but I think uh, like spending all of your time obsessing over like we're gonna die to climate change, we're gonna die to like fucking AI and like all of this stuff. I think like this is literally just a basic mentality shift. I think there's like way bigger problems in society that cause this um, line of thinking that has nothing to do with like big world problems or whatever the fuck. It just doesn't actually make fucking sense to me um, as to why this would even be brought up. Like I, I think most of it is like lack of social interaction, lack of exercise, eating poorly, sleeping poorly is like Oh, and, like, failure to understand how to, like, engage with, <clears throat> um, you know, internet and social media and this type of shit, like, at, um, like, appropriate levels. Like, I think, like, so many people are, like, insanely addicted to their phones and to, like, social media and shit, and we just, like, don't even think about it or realize it, but it, like, causes this whole, um, it causes, like, this huge lack of fulfillment and lack of like meaning and shit like in society um but i could random i could ramble about this like all fucking day i need to play pokemon give up right well, the reason why people don't also my fucking roommate is sleeping so i have to like close my door every time i speak basically so i'm like and when i close my door my room doesn't get enough ventilation and shit so i'm like literally like, closing my door and talking and now it's hot so like please kill me care about the social issues is because they're disconnected from the social environment. Why would somebody care about what happens in climate change? I think Asmund is literally making my point. And some of you might agree with that. Some might even take the idea further and say something like this. Okay, so I get what you're saying. It sounds to me like doomerism and apathy are almost like a rational response. Why would anyone bother caring when facing these issues such as climate change or retirement? Yeah. It seems to me like the sensible, rational thing to do is to give up, right? Well, the reason why people don't care about the social issues is because they're disconnected from the social environment. Why would somebody care about what happens in climate change? Why would somebody care about the world if the world doesn't care about them? Basically, that's what it is. So that's why you have people that are Wait, withdrawing from society and are... Wait, what? Hold on. What did this guy say? Further and say something like this. Okay. They're taught that the mitochondria is the powerhouse, but they can speak another language in a country. This. Okay, so I get what you're saying. It sounds to me like doomerism and apathy are almost like a rational response. Why would anyone bother caring when facing these issues such as climate change or retirement? Yeah. It seems to me like the sensible, rational thing to do is to give up, right? Well, the reason why people don't care about the social issues is because they're disconnected. The rational thing to anyone bother caring when facing these issues such as climate change or retirement? Yeah. It seems to me like the sensible, rational thing to do is to give up, right? Well, the reason why people don't care about the social issues is because they're disconnected from the social environment. <laughs> Wait, why he's not saying? He never said to not care about the social issues. He's saying that, like, you should he's like proposing a logical reason as to why somebody would be a doomer justifying it with climate change why the fuck is Asman saying this why would somebody care about what happens in climate change why would somebody care about the world if the world doesn't care about them basically that's what it is i mean Asman's correct about this but that's not the point that the guy is making i don't think um or whatever i'll just let him play so that's why you have people that are withdrawing from society and are so, like, you know, I think a really great example of this is, like, you think about all the people that were celebrating, those, those guys that got killed in, the, uh, in that submarine, in the Titanic. Uh, not in the Titanic, but, you know, like, trying to see the Titanic. The reason why they're celebrating it is because they feel like those are the people that are causing their life to be bad. That's the reason. And in their mind, these are the, these are the people that are disconnecting them from a healthy life. Uh, Hassan, bro, Hassan. <laughs> bro, like... Uh, He's not here. Is Hassan in the room with you right now? Stop it. Like, there's plenty of crazy people all over. There's a Morbid Simpson Yeoman. Kind of funny with a guy, not gonna lie. Well, I mean, I don't know. But the point, I, I don't mind the jokes. I think the jokes are fine, but there are people that genuinely feel that way. I think jokes. People are always gonna joke, 9 11 jokes, fucking like school shooter jokes. Yeah, sure. But I don't think anybody's getting upset about that, except for pussies. But the people that are, I'm really talking about, the people that like are genuinely happy about this, they're like, haha, we got one for our team. And at one point in my life, I would have agreed with this. But lucky for me, you're allowed to change your mind. Yeah. 
I would even encourage him. See, I believe that most people in my age group are genuinely passionate about certain things. We do face this issue, however, that we are constantly told that our efforts are futile. And in such an environment, the overwhelmingly sensible thing to do is... Well, that's because they are. Uh, people's, uh, most people's efforts are futile. Uh, if you live in a gerrymandered district, uh, if you live in uh, some fucking redneck place in Florida, and you think that, uh, you know, you, you, you think there should be a universal basic income, your vote, is they're going to take your vote and they're going to put it in the garbage. And your vote goes into the garbage. And it's going to stay there until the next time that you vote and that one's going to go into the garbage on top of the first one. However, just because somebody can't affect the world doesn't mean that they can't affect their life. There are a lot of people who oh, can okay. improve their life. I was like, can, as you were giving the worst take of all time. <laughs> they can't improve the world. And in my opinion, if enough people improve their life, they will collectively improve the world. But nobody wants to do that because it's a lot easier to say that, oh, well, I'm disenfranchised from voting. Oh, well, this system is against me. You're right. The system probably is against you, and you probably are getting disenfranchised. And what are you going to do about it? Because if you don't do anything, nobody cares. Because nobody cares about you and you don't matter. And as soon as you realize that, it's a morbid feeling, but it's also very freeing. Because whenever you see that, you can realize and take actions for yourself. Rather than waiting on somebody to bestow upon you the life that you were promised from a Disney movie. That's what I do. Not bother. But I don't necessarily think that that's an inherently rational way to respond. Mm -hmm. In fact, when it comes to human behavior, rationality is the exception rather than the rule. And I think keeping that in mind is really important when it comes to challenging thought patterns that can be unhelpful to you. The idea of rationality in human decision making was kind of the motivation for this entire piece, specifically the work of Daniel Kahneman, a psychologist who specializes in that area. His most famous piece of work is probably the book Thinking Fast and Slow. And in it, there's one specific idea that I wanted to share. I actually came across Thinking Fast and Slow in a bookshop recently, and it got me thinking about the subject of rationality. I'd read the book years ago, but thanks to today's sponsor, Short Form, I was able to get a really quick overview of the main ideas. I found that the books on Short Form are way more useful than, like, a normal book summary. They come with these neat little exercises to test your knowledge, and they also have references and sources to all of the material inside the book. They have books on psychology, science, economics, and just about... Yeah, but do they have the books that you have to read in high school that you don't want to, and so you can just take the test, like, on there, and then it just tells you the right answers, you don't really have to read the book? Because I did that on Petra and Arai, like, two times, like, one in community college and one time in high school. And it worked pretty well with Spark Notes, but it wasn't ideal. Everything else. So I really do think that was something incredible. Exactly. I've used a few services like this before, but what I really liked about short form is that they made it super easy for me to dive deeper into specific areas and ideas that I found interesting. And I didn't have to commit undue time and energy to learn the things that I wanted to learn. If you two are interested, then you can get five days of unlimited access to thousands of books and a 20% discounted annual subscription through my link. Shortform.com slash that. Thank you to Shortform for sponsoring this. Let's get back to it. So the specific idea that really resonated with me goes along the following line. When trying to answer the question, what do I think about X? You tend to think about the stuff and have them tell you what they think. Easier, but misleading question. What do I remember about X, and how easily do I remember it? <laughs> the more easily you remember something, the more significant you perceive it. Yeah, of course. When we're surrounded by information that's designed to make us feel powerless, then naturally we design ourselves to feeling powerless. But there is well, another... Well, you're, you're not... It's not about information that makes you feel powerless. It's about information that elicits an emotional response. Like, that's what really... Like, what is... Uh, what, what's your Twitter uh, fucking thing? Like, I go to my Twitter. Like, what do I have on Twitter? Uh, somebody died. Uh, plane crashed. Titties. Somebody else died. Turns out that um, uh, fucking uh, we, we thought we were bombing uh, uh, Al Qaeda. Turns out it was a family. Government says they did nothing wrong. Uh, they've investigated themselves. Everything's okay. There were no mistakes. It's just a freak accident. More titties. Because it's again like uh, it, it's about things that are there to uh, listen. Oh yeah, I forgot. And then there's another one of like a, a two kids in high school beating the shit out of each other. And then the the school cop comes in and shoots one of them in the leg. The kid's dead now. And then after that, there's a cat girl with big titties. Because all of those things give you an emotional attachment. Worth noting. And that's that, time and time again, the people who have had the most impact, the people who've been heralded as leaders of movements, have been those who've behaved in a way that's inherently irrational. Their behavior would only ever really make sense in retrospect. Now, I'm not saying that me or you is gonna be able to solve a huge systematic inequality within our lifetimes. We have no ability to predict the impact of our behavior throughout and beyond our lifespan. What we do have an ability to do, though, is to commit to values that we believe to be true, and to focus on seeing those values represented in people immediately around us. Whenever the kind of doomer mindset tries to come back to me, I do remember the fact that, for the most part, most people will not be remembered for their actions. But that does not mean that their actions do not have lasting consequences. I would, for example, challenge you to name more. People spend all this fucking time thinking about, like, what, what, what are people going to remember about me? Who the fuck cares? You're going to be dead. What the fuck does it matter? What are you, what, what are you wasting? And, and again, the reason why people, this is, this is my perspective, is the reason why people focus on bullshit like that, it's so they can feel like they have some sort of a morally good or like morally high thing to aspire to that will rationalize in their mind them aspiring and thinking about this thing rather than solving their immediate problems. It's like if you guys ever had a situation where you needed to study, but that's whenever you decided to clean up your room so you can distract yourself and you can feel like, oh, well, I'm doing the right thing. 
I'm doing something that's good for me, and I'm tricking myself into not doing what I need to do. That's what I think people try to do. Say, Every 10 people who are actively involved in the civil rights movement. And yet, it took the collective effort of millions of people to bring about change. And I think that's true for any issue that you care about. People whose impact ends up affecting change are those who behave in a way that we would deem irrational. Because what humans would describe as rationality, I think, is more analogous to just talking about the status quo. We believe that whatever exists makes sense. I, for a long time, was a different, but I do think that things are starting to change. I'm starting to see the value of adding my voice to a collective and accepting that it doesn't matter really whether or not that voice is actually heard. What matters is that I've made a concerted effort to make it heard. You do something, like fuck. Yeah, you, you gotta do something. It's like, again, uh, everybody, again, I think people try to focus their, their energy into these high-minded ideals to make themselves feel good about ignoring their immediate life. Well, I'm solving uh, the problems of capitalism by replying to tweets of Ben Shapiro. No, you're not. No, you're not. You ain't doing shit. And you know it, and that's why they're unhappy. Within the people who are immediately around. And that approach to life has made me a lot less able. Living by values that you believe to be true is the only power I think we have. And no matter how rough or how bad things feel like they're gonna be, it's a power that you'll always have. So why not try and use it? Yep, you always have a choice. You can always do what you want. No, I figured I'd watch this video because I, like, I find this shit interesting. I, I like people that make these types of videos. I've never seen them on this channel before. I'm gonna give them a like, give them a sub. I'm gonna get all the videos. Uh, there it is. Example. Yeah, yeah. People, because people feel like uh, they're like, oh, I'm playing video games. I'm getting something, right? It's like they, they trick themselves into thinking that they're doing something productive. And I think that it's completely okay to do absolutely fucking nothing productive, to waste your time every day, to waste your entire life playing video games, jerking off, and being a fucking loser. Because if that makes you happy, then that is what you should do. Absolutely. But the one thing that I fucking hate is people that do shit like that, and then they complain that the world is out to get them. The only person that's out to get you is you when you're doing a very good job. Whenever I couldn't get a job, yes, obviously the economy was bad, but it was also because I filled out applications on old pizza boxes that gave them grease stains, and I put all my availabilities to not have to raid, to not miss any of my raids. And guess what? I never got called back. So yeah, the economy sucked. True. But so did I. is i don't know yeah i don't know <laughs> god i'm sorry <laughs> i fucking hate her voice so much and her ideas oh why am i looking at facebook fuck harrison you're retarded <laughs> grid or ancestral yellows and get them uh aspected to legendary so i guess either way it's just the same but realistically yeah i'm uh Fuck, I have a solo, like, I soloed this from, I think, like, 1 to 55, and then I obviously got into a group, and we're doing uh, runs to try and hit um, 80 right now, so, it's been crazy, bro, I've almost died, like, 10 times, it's been crazy. Whatever, what am I gonna fucking delete the VOD or some shit? No, I, I can't delete the VOD. Maybe, um, fuck. Whatever, anybody can look me up on fucking things, like.
Um, Oh, okay.
what what class you like? Um, what class am I? Uh oh, rogue. Oh, nice, nice, nice. What level are you? <coughs> I think like twenty six. <laughs> but I've died like three times at like sixteen, twelve, and <laughs> nine. So. Yeah, I died at twenty six, at sixteen, and I just restarted on my own. Nice. It was all sorceress. Oh, listen, can I can I say some random shit? Yeah. You need to make Aiden shut the fuck up and not ruin fucking Kick's reputation on saying some wild first level target shit, okay? It's not good. What are you referring to exactly? Um, I personally, if, if, so in my personal opinion, if Aiden is like just a streamer, then he should say whatever the fuck he wants, but if Aiden has kind of become in some ways, people view him as like the face of Kick and shit, or like part of like the representation of Kick, I don't think him trashing like Mizkip or Hassan, you know, regardless of how I feel or you feel or anybody feels about any of them, I think it's just a really, really bad, it just, it's like it's such an unnecessary dramatic fight to, to start that, yeah, I don't know, I think it's such a fucking bad, in my opinion, but. Yeah, um. I think, uh. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think. I, th I think, see yeah, I think seeing him as the face of kick is... That's the problem. He's almost like a, I don't know if this is, I don't know if it's like an, an official position, but he's almost like a brand ambassador for kick. And he's out here telling that Gassan to kill himself and shit. And listen, <laughs> Walter Bowling Gassan. <laughs> okay, but like not as like a representative of kick. It's just like, yeah, it's like a really, really edgy. It's like, it's just unnecessarily divisive in an era where every platform is like cutthroat competition trying to pick up stuff as much as possible. It's like, it just seems like unnecessary hate. But I don't know. This is yeah, I appreciate the input. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, hmm. have you, uh, oof, you saw those Twitch changes? Jesus. Yeah. I well, think, I finally think, yeah, I'm, I'm giving a time frame now on it. I think within a year, I feel like Twitch Prime is going away. I think within a year. Oh, easily. It, no, the numbers back it up for one to two years. Like, unless. I don't know if they're changing the tra they're trying to change the trajectory with these stupid ass backwards policies. Like, like I wonder if I wonder if they know what you just said, and they're trying to do some wild shit to keep that because they know that is going to be a hundred times worse losing that than any policy they uh, implement. Even though, you know, they're so out of touch they can't realize the things that are th that they're dismissing for the keeping of Twitch Prime, I assuming that the speculation is correct are just as bad so it's just like i don't know what the bro I, I i really don't i mean i don't i don't know what the fuck they're doing but ever since dan clancy came on board it seems to be like here's what i'm getting from it the dude had the dude has made clear who his favorite streamers are right he's he's said it out loud he's you know in my opinion when you're in a, pos a position that he is you can't be, you know, t to me that's somebody that is, he's too involved and out of touch. Do you understand? Like, it's good to be involved, but he's involved in the wrong ways. And I know people will call this bias, completely bias, but uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think, regardless of being involved or not, I think the issue is that I think Twitch is a company. It feels to me like they've bloated really heavily. Every single streamer, ex-employee, current employee that I've talked to seems to agree that the internal structure of Twitch is a fucking nightmare. That That's the right. sprawl That's of the right. company has gotten out of control. Um, and and their, their primary products or services, like, they just feel to like they have almost no focus on them anymore. Like, when was the last yes. update to Twitch that, like, a streamer cares about? Like, I think we've been stuck. Oh, we on there. Um, I think Twitch streamers have been stuck at the same bandwidth and resolution yeah. that they had, like, in, what, 2013? On Twitch, are you still yes. capped at 6 megabits per second or whatever for streaming? It's still capped over there. The quality is not as good. Yeah, so you're at 6 megabits per second, 1080p stream, which isn't even enough for a true tenure. No DVR feature. Or, I'm sorry, AA. We are capped at 8, which has been for, like, 10 years. So 8 megabits per second, no DVR features. Like, w well, like what's happening? I don't, I, like, that primary, the, which is what Twitch is streaming first, is what it is all about, like, hasn't been changed in, like, a decade. Fuck else yeah. is that company doing? Like it's just insane to me. Um, well, the first thing that they need to tackle are the sub splits. Like that. Like I, I know this has been a talking point for a while, but that's the first thing that needs to be tackled. Sub splits are like 
you know, you can talk to Devin Ash or whatever numbers guy you trust. And the numbers back that subs- what they earn from, subs- from subscriptions is it's it's minuscule. It's it's not even putting a dent into anything. Like it, th- that's a result of pure greed and stupidity. Like that alone should show the people where their mind is. Like where yeah, I they're. Know, I don't understand. Uh, it's not even it's greed. It's stupidity. Because like you said, they're not making that much money off of subscriptions. So I don't yeah, know why a, you would ever dip into that. You have to work on building your ad no network anymore. Yeah, and the ad network is, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest, like, uh, unless you're XQC, Hassan, or whoever else has that uh, pure 50-50 ad contract, mm-hmm. everyone's getting ripped off on ads as well. Like, the, the problem is no one, like, everyone's contract is right there in front of their faces. If you could just go to your dashboard on onboarding, you see your contract. No one ever reads and sees that whoever has ads is getting fucked, including myself, right? Like, it, it's... So from every angle, it's people are getting fucked. The problem is they've cornered the market and they've monopolized it. So that you know, uh, until now, what we're trying to ch- change up, which is going to take longer than now, it's going to take at least thirty-six months to really get into real competition. But they're just doing whatever the fuck they want. Like everything that is, you know, I don't want to get into that rant, but everything that, you know, a socialist nightmare is Twitch currently. Like I'm gonna say it straight up, like like a, a real socialist nightmare is Twitch currently. Do, do you understand that? Like like that's just the truth. You know, call it bias, call it oh, train hates this, rent free. No no no, that's facts. Like a real socialist nightmare is exactly what Twitch is doing right now as we speak. That, 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 that's just my opinion. I don't know. They're just behaving in a stupid way. Like they're yeah. greedy, fucking the creators over. You know, and they're and they're still doing more and more. You would think they would announce one like terrible thing, and then it gets better. No, no, no. One terrible thing, the next thing's even more terrible. Then the next thing's even more terrible. Like what? Who's running that shit? Motherfuckers from a different fucking uh, 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 universe. It's just wild. Yeah. 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 I don't know what to say. It's it's pretty insane, man. Um. Yeah. Well. Anything else? Yeah. Let's continue the conversation on. What was I going to bring up? Um, yeah, um, y- your earlier topic. I don't know. Uh, the, the first question you asked. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know? I, yeah. You know? I think... Uh, You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh... You know? Yeah. Uh... Yeah. I think it's, uh... Yeah. That's... Yeah. Yeah, that's... that's Yeah, you know? I think, uh, there needs to be, uh... You know? I think, uh... (laughs) What you said is correct. Right? If, you know, if he wants to be... If he wants to be the face or if he wants to be you know if he wants to go around telling people that you know he's at an official position then i think there needs to be i think he needs to be smarter <laughs> let's put it that way right but if you just want it like you said if you just want to be the streamer the big streamer of kick and not kind of you know put yourself in that official position then i think hey do what you want you know what i'm saying like i mean obviously like you said <laughs> some of the things are a little too far um and I'll definitely talk to him about that. But I'm just, bro, I'm at a point right now. You know, I am just, I'm, I don't know. I'm so fed up. I'm, I know it's a little like, maybe I'm letting my uh, irrational, you know, maybe I'm being irrational. I don't know. But for example, look at this Nick Merck stuff. Have you seen what's going on with Nick Merck's? Uh, yeah. With what he said. What's your opinion on that? Um, fuck, I'm trying to remember. He had a tweet reply to something uh, over yeah. people fighting in the street. Yeah, the, like it was like it was it was like pro LGBT supporters or anti LGBT. It was something like that, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw it. Yeah. yeah, and then he said we should just just leave the little children out of it. That's what he said. 
Oh yeah, right, that's right. Like not not what he said. Like ignore the oh, concept of what he said. What I'm saying is like, do you feel like we've reached a time where there is one primary talking point? And whether it be right or wrong, like I think this the, the way we kind of came into everything. It seems it's listen. Let me back. Let me backtrack real quick and just say what's on my mind instead of just you know being vague. Okay. <clears throat> so right now, uh, politically speaking, right, the, the, these lefties or extreme left or wh however you want to you know, you know, regard or whoever, how, whoever, however you want to regard them as, right? Mm -hmm. They believe they're the good guys, okay. But what's going on is they're forcing beliefs talking points and ways of life onto others through force through 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 you know threatening careers threatening like to me that is not the role of a bad guy the role of a, sorry, that's not the role of a good guy if they were truly the good guys you teach you're patient you understand you don't threaten you don't use cancel you're culture Sandy. you know where others can't even think differently <laughs> You have to let you have to make people understand it's a long process it takes a long time that's why a lot of these like antics that i see these days they just feel disingenuous they feel like power grabs clout grabs it doesn't feel like people are looking for actual change you know you know uh, like good change because good change comes from teaching being patient and the people actually understanding right now all that's happening is people are forced to think a way because their career is on the line People are forced to think away because something very serious could happen to them. That that doesn't breed understanding. That doesn't breed peace. That breeds war always. Because at one point the pendulum swings and you didn't actually shift anyone. You only forced them to think a certain way. So I don't like this way that we've come into where no one can even question why do I have to think this way. Even if it's the right way uh, that, that the other side's telling you to think, people should be able to question it learn understand through trial and error you understand like these things are the necessary things in my opinion understand. to actually bring real understanding and real change and real open-mindedness does that make any sense so i just I, I really don't like this thing where no one can have a countering opinion or can say you know what listen i have no hate toward that group i you know uh you know that thing uh, along those lines but like th there has to be that area like, i don't believe in that but people should be able to you know speak their mind and then through that, you help them understand why that's wrong, right? And even then, that will take time for them to understand why that's wrong. But to force them, it's 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 dividing more than it's bringing together. So I'm just really, I'm really getting fed up with these like antics and tactics that you know that side is using to you know in the name of open mindedness and equality. Does that make any sense, or am I just totally crazy? No, I mean, I, there's two sides to the story, but I mean, like, I understand, obviously, I'm not a big fan of the hardcore, like, bully people into believing you and everything. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree with that. But then obviously on their end, you know, their issue is that, you know, a lot of these people's lives are being turned into battlegrounds for political issues, and they're not even able to pursue or live the lives that they personally would want to live because other people are trying to use the government to stop them, so they have their feelings about it too, right? Yeah. I would love to hear the other side, like, from, an, from a, like, an actual... Um, from someone that's in it, from someone that's not, you know, using it to play a, you know, um, to, to further their political position or whatever the hell, you know, someone that's actually real, that's in there, that's, you know, I don't want to hear that side from them because I, I feel like that would be more understanding. I feel like I would, rather rel you know, not relate in a way where I could like relate personally, but relate in a way where I could put myself in their shoes and like, okay, you know what, like that makes sense. Right now, like uh, what you just said was exactly correct. Like people are just using this to, you know, further their political aspirations, and it just feels. Well, not just political aspirations, but their lives too, right? Like yeah. if you've spent your entire life um, feeling like you've got a medical condition that you aren't allowed to alleviate, and now you've got people that are literally fighting to make it impossible for you to do so. They're making legislation so that, m like medically, it's now illegal for you to try to fix these problems. Then I mean, obviously, they're going to feel like they need to fight back with everything they have as well. Are you referring to, uh, you know, like, uh, the, the, like, testosterone therapies and the things that kind of, yeah. you're referring to that kind of stuff, that, the, the, the transitioning yeah, basically, things? Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm in support of people having that. The thing is, I think, I think there's, I really do believe there should be a, uh, 
I mean, see, I haven't done my research, so I really shouldn't talk about this because let, let, me, let, me, let me actually ask you before uh, assuming. Is this something that you, if you wanted to do, you, it is necessary to do at a young age? Or is it something that you could do at age 18 or 19 when you're a little older and you have a little bit better understanding, your brain's developed a little bit more? You know, not, not saying that your brain's underdeveloped, you know, that, old, that people who make those decisions are, you know, underdeveloped brains. I'm just saying, like, when you're younger, you might do things that, you know, yeah, the older it's, you it's disagree with. Like, um, it's a difficult catch-22 um, yeah. because you want to wait for people to be older and mature and not make dumb decisions. Um, but the issue is that it kind of does have to be done at like um, at like a younger age for for like trans women, right? That um, like if you think about like people that are disrespectful and mean to trans people, yeah. like who who are they usually bullying? Usually they're bullying. Fuck, dude. I gotta be honest. I'm really fucking tired. <laughs> I um, I think I'm actually just not even gonna continue playing. What's my um? Yeah, I just need to, uh, I need to sleep, I need to get my sleep schedule back together, so I, I need to stay up, um, wait, why is my thing set to fire red leaf green? Let me change this. Hold on. Oh, now it's scarlet violet. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Uh, well, hopefully that's stage for the next time. But yeah, I'm um yeah I was gonna stop streaming because uh, I don't really want to keep playing. Um, I feel like I'm just like gonna make some mistake or some shit. Cause I'm tired and uh, I'm also not even that like inspired to play right now. <laughs>